All right, Miko, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I guess it's pretty late by you. Uh, yeah, it's nine. It's not, it's wine o'clock. So <laughs> it's not you're, too late. You're in Germany now, right? Yeah. So how long have you been there now? Uh, two and a half years. Wow. Yeah, time flies. You feel like you've adjusted to the, the new culture? Um, I'm adjusting. It's a constant adjustment. Uh, but yeah, I like it a lot here. It's just, um, I don't really speak German. So that's my next big step is taking um, like an intensive German course. I guess you've got all the downtime that you need right now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I wonder with you being in Germany, how much are you able to keep in touch with what's going on here? Like, obviously things are crazy everywhere, but with there's additional stuff going on crazy in the United States. How much of that are you having to seek out versus just being made aware of naturally? Um, well, I, I wake up every morning and I try to go as long as I can without checking the news or Twitter. Um, and I usually make it about 20 minutes. Um, cause I want to see what's happened while I was sleeping. And, um, yeah, uh, I notice that when I don't read the news then I'm a happier person in the day, but it's like this weird addiction where I need to know what's going on. I feel more patriotic than I have ever felt by not living in America. So I feel more um, connected to what's actually going on than I, than I ever have. And, um, and yeah, a lot of people ask me when I'm out and about like, where are you from? If I say America, then they go on this like long list of questions or this tangent about how they really feel about things, people. And so now I, I just say I'm Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. So like for me personally, I deleted Facebook. I kept Instagram, but, and I never had a, I had a Twitter briefly, but not for very long. I feel like it just sort of creates a negative headspace to be in when everything's constantly so negative i know i try to follow like happy things like there's this twitter called quite interesting and they just post random fun facts and i'm like oh you know shitty news shitty news shitty news oh funny fact about snails um so i think if i just bounce it out and have more like silly happy-go-lucky things then that would be better for my head or maybe just you know cut it all out I did try that for for two weeks, and um, it did feel I did feel a lot better. We well, I mean it's built. It's literally built to reward things that upset you because you interact more naturally with things that upset you than you do with things that make you happy. So yeah. then, the more that you're commenting on stuff you don't like, the more it feeds you those things to where it becomes a self perpetuating negative mill of nonsense. Yeah, that's true. I was talking to um, this guy who told me that um, that I should not that I should be careful about the attention. I mean, whatever. And he, he was just a stranger, basically. And I got into this conversation with him. Same thing about how the news upsets me, but I can't stop giving it my attention. And he was saying, um, you know, you can't just um, let things like you can't just freely give your attention to things that are negative because it's just going to throw back negative negativity to you. And, um, so I'm trying to, I try to focus more on things that are going to serve me like music and writing songs and sitting my ass down and trying to make some music. Um, but maybe I could do that after November 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know about you, but for us, so much of our advertising is done via social media. So even though a lot of my, I don't have personal accounts anymore, I'm still spending a decent chunk of my day on Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. Twitter to try to promote things. And you can't yeah. help but see all the vitriol that comes out on things. That's true. It's true. And especially Facebook. Um, I don't spend a lot of time on my, I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook generally, but that is, uh, it's where my, I have a personal Facebook that I go to sometimes and that I know will upset me because there's such a clash of opinions and I have friends that are fighting and, um, and it can get really intense. I, I prefer 
you know, Twitter where I can just choose what I'm looking at and Instagram where I can follow my friends, but I can also mute them. <laughs> so it's not, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's all, it's all crap though. I mean, really the human, the physical human connection is the most important one, but, uh, being in Germany, I'm, I'm craving, I'm craving that human connection, but I'm not getting it, um, physically with people here because I can't just walk up to someone and say, Hey, you're cool. Like let's hang out or nice dress or, I mean, cause there's such a communication, um, I don't know, problem. Well, plus so now, I have, there's like that fear of them being sick and everyone's wearing a mask and social oh, distancing yeah. and you, it's even when yeah. there's people that, you know, you don't know if they're okay with being hugged, let alone a complete stranger. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a totally different and important point. Yeah. The, uh, the actual pandemic that's going on now. Um, yeah. How is it there? Well, I'm in New York. Mm -hmm. So um, in the city proper. So during the week, I pretty much just stay in my apartment. We're all working from home remotely. So I don't have to go to the Times Square office, thankfully. Okay, good. Um, get out to the girlfriend's house on the weekend. And then that's literally like my only time out. Yeah. Like, I almost view it as like, that's my yard time. And then it's back to my cell during the week. <laughs> I know we live in an apartment too, without a yard. So we're really relishing the, uh, the parks and stuff here. Um, yeah. I go for a run once a week. Cause I'm doing the marathon this upcoming weekend. So oh, nice. Awesome. It's virtual this year. Cause obviously they can't get you know, thousands of people together to do the marathon. Hold on a second. How are you going to do a virtual marathon? So you wear a GPS watch that mm -hmm. tracks your time and distance so that it knows that you ran 26.2 miles in a given amount of time and then it sends the results. Oh, that's cool. Do you think I mean, there'll be any cheaters? I mean, maybe, but at the same time, I don't think there's really a winner this year because also you're not running on the same course. So my yeah. 26 miles isn't the same as your 26 miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different times a day, different weather, different terrain. It's more about just that you did it, which I did last year. I did another one, but... I, yeah. I did it in such poor conditions weather-wise that I wanted to see what I could do under normal conditions and then, and then life threw me not normal nice. conditions this year either. Yeah, go 2020. Yeah. What's, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> is Germany still <laughs> locked down? What are you able to do? Um, no, we're not locked down, but I feel like a lockdown is looming. Uh, mm. Everyone's kind of feeling that. Um, we were locked down, um, you know, when all of it kind of started uh getting bad everywhere um but then they eased it and um now i think i think that they're gonna start imposing a, a no more than six people at a time rule uh, but yeah all the shows are canceled all the all the you know main big of course like group gatherings are canceled and i was really looking forward to seeing alanis morissette this month or uh, yeah, it's this month, but um, that's been canceled and yeah, whatever. That's a small, small problem to have, I guess. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so a new way of life. Have you kept it all in touch or aware of how Hotel Cafe is doing out in LA? I am keeping in touch with <clears throat> a few people and I guess uh, they're doing some virtual shows from there. And um, I'm really nervous about about places like that and small venues and I don't know how they're going to survive um, because it's not like um, the landlord's going to just, you know, let them slide unless, I don't know, unless there's some sort of no rent thing that, you know, that right. happens. Because then even then landlords have property taxes that have to be paid still. So it's mm -hmm. at some point someone's got to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, insurance companies maybe, I don't know. It's pretty scary because yeah, it is a um, domino effect of, of people, you know, if you try to help one person out then that screws someone else over and then, and then on and on and on. Because without Hotel Cafe, it's a very different story for you. Yeah, it is. Um, I don't know. 
yeah, I'm just kind of hoping that this all goes away and people can start rebuilding. Um, but yeah, I guess we all have to just be patient and yeah, I hope it's not, I hope places like the hotel cafe are not going to go away because they're, they're so influential, um, to the city and to the, to the world, you know, introducing new music and keeping live music going and yeah, it's all, it's all kind of a shit show right now. <laughs> so once you were singing there, I mean, obviously you just, they have the long story of when you started as a waitress and then started singing there. How did, how did that next step come into where my space comes into the picture? Um, yeah, I was singing there and I was waiting tables and I was recording uh, my album at night after work. And um, once I had this little EP done, I called it the onion EP because it was layers, layers of emotions. <laughs> uh, and it had five, it had like four out of five songs that ended up making my first record. Uh, just started passing it around to people. I gave it to a lot of uh, people I waited on. I was like, here's your bill and my CD. Um, and uh yeah, eventually I, I played I played a show and more and more people started coming to my shows, which was really cool to see because I s watched it go from, you know, five people in the audience to a sold out show, even being a waitress. And I was very proud of myself. Um, and one of the shows, uh, the woman who um, puts music in Grey's Anatomy, she was there and she asked me after my show, like, oh, do you do you mind if I put that song reasons to love you in the third um, season premiere? And I was like, I would love if you did that. <laughs> I would not mind at all. And so um, that was, I think that was my first break. And then when that aired, it was a few other things that really um, started happening. Perez Hilton posted about me. Um, and so that was a really big deal. And also iTunes had put me on their front page. Um, it's like, I don't know, single of the day or something, single of the week. And um, I felt, I felt like my little waitress trajectory was kind of going somewhere and it was nice. <laughs> and then I started touring. And you've had a long history with sync too. I think the first time that I, became aware of you you had a song was it in a cat food commercial um i did have a song in the cat food com commercial it was um fancy feast best cat food there is <laughs> was that stuck on you yeah yeah and that was a uh, yeah that was really uh, it was really cool because it was a national commercial and my every time my dad would hear it, he would call me and be like, I, I hear you again. Um, and uh, yeah, good times. <laughs> and so after the MySpace project, you end up with Concord. How does that process yes. happen? Um, well, MySpace started um, to, well, they just closed down basically. They decided to shut down their record label. Um, portion uh, that was one of the first things to go and uh, when I signed my record deal with them I, I did a two record deal and um, I was I just finished my second record with them and uh, found out the news uh, but they told me that I could keep both of my records which was a pretty big deal um, that they they were just basically like here you go we're really sorry good luck and so I have, um, I owned my, my two records, my first and second record and second record I had just done, um, the bright side. And so I went to, oh, I had a meeting with Concord and, um, they wanted to release my second record and, um, they asked me in one of the meetings, uh, what, what is one thing you want to see happen with this record? And I said, I just want to go to Japan. I want, I want this to do something in Japan and I want to be able to go there because I'm part Japanese and I'd never been there before. And I wanted to connect with my, um, that part of me and, and some family members. 
And, um, and they said, all right, sign here basically. <laughs> so, um, they released the, my second record and right when it was released, I was, um, I was going to Japan a lot and, um, promoting it. And the song stuck on you had gotten to number one on the radio for, I think 12 weeks on three different formats there. And, um, so I was, my dream had come true and they totally came correct with their, with their uh, promises as a record label, which I hear a lot of people don't get, you know, lucky, lucky with, with their record labels. And um, I had a really nice experience with them. Well, promising then, results is always difficult. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And so I only signed a two record deal with them. So I did that record and then I did the next one, Dear You. And, um, and then I was on my own again. And uh, that's when I just started releasing stuff independently because it's uh, a lot easier and it's, it's harder because you don't have a lot of money to back it. So you have to take your time and um, do things like, uh, you know, what is it? Well, there's Patreon, but there was another one, Pledge Music and um, gets fan support. Um, but there's something about releasing independent music that makes you feel like you're more part of it because you have you, the only person you can answer to is yourself. And if it doesn't do anything, then you can think, well, maybe I didn't do this right, or maybe I'll, I'll fix this or I'll change this the next, no, the next time I release something. I don't know. It feels more empowering, I think, in a way. Well, even for label releases, budgets aren't now what they once were everything that you spend needs to be a very concerted effort and planned decision because now yeah. people are streaming more purchasing less it becomes a different targeted approach on every record and of course now in the story we come to the most important day of your musical career which is when i come into your life yes with playing favorites this was your first break into doing covers as opposed to original material yeah so what was fun for you about that? Um, the most, I mean, that was one of the coolest things I had ever done. I have ever done. Um, I liked the idea of going through songs that I loved as a high schooler and picking my favorite ones and the ones that were the most influential to me and recording them. And I have never been really a cover song player I've always enjoyed playing my own songs at shows and um and this is a cool opportunity for me to to try out uh songs that that I sing all the time in my head and love and I, I learned them on guitar and um and yeah it was a it was a very cool project and especially the way it was recorded where I'm singing to a a mannequin with with microphones all over his head <laughs> that was really cool and in a church, I'd imagine that was probably the first time for that also. Yep. Well, not the first time I sang in a church. I'm from Georgia now. Well, recording. Um, yeah, yeah, recording. Um, yeah, just the, oh my God, the acoustics of that church. Uh, amazing. It was a very cool experience. And also getting the record done in a day. Yeah, never done that before. Um, it was cool. It was like a, yeah, it was like I was, I was with a, a whole crew of people just and everybody had their fancy headphones on and um, did a lot of takes. And I, I loved that I was able to use um, my, uh, well, my band because, you know, our three piece, because that was something um, I've always wanted to do, just sit around and play music with them. I remember when we were going over the list of songs and you had said, um, the, show me love from Robin. Mm -hmm. There's two of those. There are literally two. There's two songs called show me love from an artist named Robin. So what? go going into the recording date, I was thinking it was the other one. Oh, and I was like, yeah. I love that song. And then you start singing. And I'm like, I, what I don't I don't even know this yeah song. no yeah there's Robin and there's Robin C I think one of the Robins spells her name with a Y right the um, the Robin that I was thinking of I think is with a Y yeah. show me love show me love da, right na, 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 na. That's, yeah. that's going in that's what I was thinking of what it was and whenever he started I was like huh 
I don't, yeah. I don't even know this one. Oh man, that one was a, that one was a jam. I have a sister that's five years older than me. So that was, um, that was some music that she introduced me to when I was like 14. I love that song. <laughs> I just got a text uh, earlier this week from a friend of mine who was uh, getting in their car and they put on the coffee house from Sirius XM and one of your songs was on. Oh, cool. I can't remember if it was No Rain or I think Zombie are the two that Coffee House plays. Yeah, they yeah, they play the two of those and I think those are the only two they play. Um but uh yeah, they've always been so supportive. I um very grateful for that station and just um yeah, every time I go into New York, I visit them and, and they ask me if I if I have any new stuff and I'll always go and play things that I haven't released or recorded and um yeah, they just uh I've built up a, a nice relationship with them. And it's it's really nice to have their support. And what are you able to do, I guess, during all of this other than write music? Are you able to do any shows? No. You were doing shows. virtual shows once a week <laughs> for a while there, right? Yeah. Um, I was doing it for, I think I did it for like 20 weeks in a row or something crazy. Uh yeah, I was doing Sunday night or Sunday afternoons. And um, eventually I was just, I was getting a little burned out. I'll, I'll probably do it again um, at some point. Cause it was, it was really fun. And I was seeing the same people show up at the, on the chats and, you know, it's nice to be silly, especially when we were in lockdown that kind of got me through, through that time because I was so anxious to connect to people. And, um, and that was, I was, anxious to play shows and so that I don't know, ticked a few boxes. I'm curious when all this is over, what habits might be changed say forever with a certain demographic as far as going to concerts and sporting events. And I mean, obviously there'll always be concerts and those types of things, but will there be a big sh a shift towards digital sort of one-to-one -one performances? Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question i don't know it's hard for me to imagine that if there was no coronavirus that it, it would still people would still want to sit in front of their computers and watch shows i think people are going to going to be really ready to see live music in person and um are really going to appreciate that whole scene more and maybe even be more supportive and be more out there um, I can't imagine that after this people, I mean, I don't know, I guess maybe people will be freaked out a little bit about crowds. I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be listening to music and, you know, real music, um, live music. I'm going to definitely, when I can, I will. I'm also I curious. That now. <laughs> but I'm also curious if there's people who right now they're watching from like across the world who might not get a chance to see you otherwise that are now you're creating an additional marketplace of people who ah. watching a virtual show is something they had never really considered doing before. Now it's their only kind of show. Okay. You're now opening up a whole new demographic of people who otherwise were just going to go watch other people in their town rather than, okay. well, now I can watch Miko or the guy from my town. It's the same thing. Okay. Yes. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. That was one thing that I did notice. Um, and, the cool thing about virtual shows is that you're connecting in at one time with people from all over the world, because as a independent artist, when you're trying to tour, it's like, mm, where do I go? Where I have the most fans who, who will buy the most tickets? Okay. New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and you're only hitting the big, the bigger cities, but you can't really go to Des Moines. And even though, you know, there's a few fans there, like, Boise, Idaho, which I love Boise, but, um, it's, it's just not feasible to, to make it to all these smaller places. So the cool thing about, um, the online shows is that people from everywhere are able to join in and in the comfort of their own homes with no pants and, uh, and watch <laughs> and watch the shows. So I guess maybe there is a market for that. I don't know, but me as a music listener and lover, I'm, very much looking forward to traveling and seeing shows and I don't know. 
Yeah, most of my previous ticket purchases have been postponed to 2021, like the exact same date, just a year later. You're like, okay, yeah. we'll see if this actually happens. I guess I it's so they don't have to do a refund. Oh yeah, that's totally, totally what it is. Um, I don't know. I guess it's it's wishful thinking. It's hopeful. I hope that 2021 is um, is better. They're talking about having a a vaccine that's going to be ready here in Germany in uh, the beginning of the year. So hopefully that goes well. And I don't know. Hopefully things just start chilling out a bit. I saw was it there was some sort of list or something that was you had shared on social media that was artists that I guess were similar to you and mm-hmm. Anna and Alec was on it. Yeah. And what was that list? Uh, uh, it was um, something I found on Spotify, like the artist Spotify page. You can see what, uh, what other artists your fans are listening to. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, it was pretty funny because I, I had known most, I think I knew everybody on the list. It was maybe 10 or 12 girls and um and they're all people whose music i love and who's uh yeah who i i i like as people too so i felt like i was in a a good group of people i was feeling lots of warm fuzzy feelings uh about that whole thing well did you know that last year we put out a record with anna yes i did know that the blackest crow did you get a chance to listen to it i did she is incredibly talented yeah it was uh it was really good. I liked hearing her in the the raw state like that. Especially now that you could commiserate on what it's like to to do that all in one mic in the church. Yeah, you totally. Could feel her pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to um it's just it, because those mics pick up every nuance, every every little detail. And as a performer or singer, you're you have all your little things that you do and no voice is the same, even though it might seem the same to, you know, a listener, but uh, maybe if it's auto tuned, it sounds the same, but, um, but you're hearing all of these little cracks and uh, wobbles and I don't know the real, the realness of it. That's what I love the most about what, what Chesky does. Yeah. We typically do multiple records back to back over the course of a week. So we could do five albums in seven days and so we're in that we're just living in that church essentially but yeah. like you said it's a different singer each time so everything has to be changed slightly for each session yeah and since it is a different singer then i i wonder if you guys would get i mean you don't get burned out of just like oh god music again i mean it, it, since it is uh, since you are choosing the people that you're working with then it's probably keeps it exciting well, so you're not doing just one song the whole day, like you would be in like a multi-track setting. Mm-hmm. So it's not all right. Take 437, like, <laughs> or here's that one line again. It's yeah. okay. We're gonna do this song four, maybe five times, and then we really need to move on, or your voice is gonna be shot yeah. by the end of the day. Yeah, that was uh, something that we had to think about because I think I recorded 14 songs or 15, and uh, by the end I was. I drank a lot of coffee, and uh, but I was pretty, was pretty beat, but not too beat to go eat sushi. Uh. <laughs> oh, Morimoto, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I had to call them because I was dressed for like my church clothes, which is not my like Sunday church clothes, but my recording at the church all week clothes. <laughs> yeah. Those are not the same clothes you should be wearing to Morimoto, and I had to call and give them a heads up. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Since I have been, or since the quarantine happened, I kind of hunkered down in my little tiny studio. Uh, well, it's not really a studio. It's just a, it's basically a closet with my computer and some headphones and a little uh, MIDI keyboard. Um, but I recorded a few songs and uh, I'm getting them um, uh, mixed and mastered in the next coming weeks. And I'm going to release that I really I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it um if I'm just going to do a single here and there or if I'm going to do a little EP I thought about making an EP called um the apocalypse sessions but um because they're all songs that I wrote when I thought shit was going down um we do in crazy (laughs) times yeah so 
we just put out know. a single this last Friday um, called Eve of Destruction. Ooh. Casey Abrams with Cindy Lauper. Oh, wow. Hey, that's cool. Did you ever hear the original? Uh, the Barry Maguire Eve of no. Destruction? Like, it's during the Vietnam War. It's talking about all the chaotic things that were going on then. The lyrics have been updated for everything mm. that's going on in 2020. Crazy. Wasn't Barry Maguire a uh, baseball player? That is Mark Maguire. Oh. <laughs> There's also Barry Bonds, so I think you okay. merged them. Oh, that's the baby that they had together. <laughs> well, the, song's from, <laughs> the song was written by P.F. Sloan. Okay. I don't know the song, but uh, we'll check it out. That sounds interesting. But yeah, so, I mean, it is, it is crazy times that we're living in. Yeah. Yeah, but hopefully, um, hopefully this just teaches people uh, what really matters, which is family and friends and food. And um, I don't know, uh, for me, I've, I've learned to cook during all of this and I've learned to enjoy cooking and I've learned to appreciate things instead of needing to buy things all the time, like take the things that I do have and rearrange them or um, repair them if they're broken or, um, I don't know. I, that's a very German, German life. It's like, Oh, I'll just take this radio. And I mean, I didn't repair radio, but, um, you know, my whole thing was like darning socks. I got into this deep hole of like, why do people just throw away socks when they have hole uh, deep hole? Well, why do people just throw away socks when they have holes? And, um, so I like had all these socks that I was ready to throw away and I just started sewing them up and I'm like, they're brand new socks. They are perfectly awesome socks now. And, um, and then I got on my high horse, like I'm just going to mend and repair everything in the house. I'm like going through my husband's stuff and my son's like jeans with the holes you know, ripped out. And I don't know, I just went on a sewing spree. So that was my exciting life during lockdown. <laughs> every time I see a, a humorous shirt, I think of you. Thank you. <laughs> Wait. Thanks for the shirt. You bought me the shirt. I really appreciate it. I From the meatball it, store. Yeah, it's um, the meatball shop in New York City. <laughs> they, they have a number of products with just that as their slogan written on it. I love it. So cool. So I'm on Patreon, um, which people can um, sign up and listen to new demos. And I um, post random blog stuff and I have, uh, yeah, I do stuff on there. Some really interactive things that I don't post on actual social media. Um, and then I have my Instagram, which is Miko Music. Um, my Twitter, which is Miko. And yeah, that's all. I'm on, I'm everywhere. Just put put in Miko. M e i k o. Mexico without the X and a K instead of the C. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you for joining us.